né? Good evening, uh, Prep and Villa freshman uh, parents. Uh, welcome to our uh, parent uh, information night that we hold each year. Uh, typically, we hold this event in person, um, and obviously we would prefer uh, for that to be in person, uh, but given the uh, continuing uh, COVID-19 uh, pandemic, we uh, felt that it would be better uh, to, to obviously get this information out to you all, um, you know, via, via Microsoft Teams this evening. Uh, a little bit of a similar experience to what your students, uh, you know, what your sons and daughters see um, every day. Uh, for those of you that don't know me, um, I'm Will Patuch. I'm the Vice President of Academic and Student Affairs for Cathedral Prep, Villa Marie Academy, and Mother Teresa Academy. Um, my role at Prep and Villa is uh, a little bit like, uh, a little bit more like a principal, um, you know, overseeing the academic affairs operations. And one of the things that um, that is uh, actually one of the more fun parts of my job is uh, overseeing the guidance department and working with our counselors um, to ensure that we're giving, um, you know, the the best um, the best care and direction for your sons and daughters. Um, you know, obviously we we value the uh, the partnership um, and the investment that you all are making in your sons and daughters' futures. And uh, nights like tonight are, you know, one of those ways that we try to go above and beyond to make sure that your, uh, uh, you know, your sons and daughters are getting that preparation, not just to be successful in, in high school, um, academically preparation for SATs, ACTs, and those things, but also getting prepared for those next steps uh, for college and beyond. Um, I'm joined this evening by um, actually a classmate of mine, um, so Miss uh, Mrs. Ashley Mook. Um, she is our ninth grade counselor. Um, so Ashley, say hi to the folks. Hello, everybody. <laughs> and um, so um, Ashley is going to be taking you through the, um, um, you know, the presentation this evening. Um, just so that you're all aware, number one, uh, this event is being recorded, so it will be available on the school's website, and I'll be emailing out um, to all of you that information, as well as all the handouts and additional documents that Ashley is going to be talking about. Um, also, during this presentation, we uh, there's a chat feature, uh, question and answer feature. If you look on um, Microsoft Teams bar, um, it's it's uh, it's got two like little speaky bubbles on it, and uh, it's got a question mark. Um, you can send in any questions at any time, and um, we're happy to help with those. Um, we'll actually answer those live um, during the presentation. So if something you know fits in naturally, you know I'll bounce that question over to Ashley, or I'll answer it myself. Um, during this presentation, we definitely want to make sure if you do have any questions that you have those answered because getting prepared, I mean, I know that's a lot getting your sons and daughters into freshman year in the first place, but then, you know, you're going to have a lot of questions along the way. And we really want to make sure that um, that you have all the answers you need um, to make sure that uh, your sons and daughters are set up to be successful um, in the next four years. Um, all right. So, um, I guess right now, I guess we'll start with the, the presentation. Did I miss anything? No, anything that else? I, great. Anything else I need to? Uh, anything else I need to add? Um, we shall get started. All right, we're going to go ahead and get that presentation sent over, so we can see it. All right, here we go. All right. Well, thank you, parents, for joining us. Um, as Mr. Patuch said, I am Ashley Mook, and I am your son or daughter's freshman counselor. I do work with all freshmen on both campuses. So in scheduling, my schedule is as I am on, Mon or on Preps campus, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday morning, and then I transition over to Villa on Wednesday afternoon, Thursday, and Friday. I'm always available through email. So even if your son or daughter have a question for me and I'm on, on that specific campus, they can always email me and I will get back to them right away. Um, in addition to myself, we do have two full-time counselors on each campus. We'll go ahead and meet the counselors. So on Preps campus, we have Mrs. Mary Hammer, and she works with students with the last name A through L. We have Mrs. Mia Sanner. She works with students M through Z, plus the international and out-of-state students. And on Villas campus, we have Ms. Jean Peterson. She works with students last names A through L and Miss Alyssa Pyle, and she works with students last names M through Z with the international and out of state students. So let me give you an idea of how the breakdown of guidance works. So I work with all incoming freshman classes, so I will continue to work with every incoming freshman class. As your son or daughter transitions into their sophomore year, they will have one of the teachers that we, or excuse me, one of the counselors that we just mentioned. So if they are on Preps campus, um, they'll have Mrs. 
Hammer or Mrs. Sanner based on their last name. So we look at students' last names, A through L, and then M through Z, and that's the same for um, those counselors on Villa's campus. So they, those two counselors are always in the building every day. So if I am on a specific campus and a student needs to see me or um, needs to talk to a counselor and I'm not physically there, they always can go see one of those auxiliary counselors. Um, we have a pretty good working process that if a student needs to be seen, they can go see Mrs. Hammer, or Mrs. Sanner, Ms. Pyle, Ms. Peterson, and then they will share with me whatever has been going on and then I will follow up with that student once I return to that campus. So there's always somebody physically to be able to be seen um, to see your student if need be. Um, in addition to next year, so once your student is a sophomore, they will have that same counselor their sophomore, junior and senior year. So again, I will work with all incoming freshmen and then as they graduate into their sophomore, junior and senior year, they'll have the same counselor for those three years. So the role of guidance. My main role is just to help with that transition to high school. So although this is a very unconventional year for everyone, it is most important for the freshmen just to make sure that they're feeling comfortable, make sure that they're feeling confident with everything that's going on. Um, my role is to make sure that if they have any questions, they have any concerns, that they feel confident that they can come to see me, that they feel comfortable, that they can reach out with any sort of question. It can be an academic question. It can be a social concern. Um, anything under the sun, it can be help with locker if they are having troubles with the lock on their locker, um, as simple as something like that and, and to any other extreme. I want them to know that they have somebody who has their back immediately walking into this building. Yeah, that was a that was a big change that we made a few years ago in our guidance department uh, was to ensure that um, that those freshmen because you know our, our freshmen come in from a wide variety of schools right um, not just you know catholic you know catholic elementary schools but public schools um some suburban schools some urban schools so we ultimately wanted to make sure that there was a you know more more of a targeted response to uh, that transition to high school and that's that's uh, one of the roles that ashley plays uh, in a very very positive way for our students um, over the last couple school years yeah, the transition to high school can be very intimidating for some students. Um, we definitely see that some students are not used to the workload that they get their freshman year. There may be more demands put on them, more responsibilities. Um, obviously, they're in a brand new building with a brand new set of teachers, so all things to kind of get used to, to kind of start learning how to um, respond back and forth to that. It can be intimidating for students to reach out to teachers, although we will say 100% make sure that they are doing that. But if if that's something that they're just not quite comfortable with, or maybe they're having an issue with that teacher, you know, I want them to know that, that they can come see me. They can see anyone in guidance to share those concerns. We can work, work through it so that they feel super comfortable and feel confident in moving forward that they have a good plan of action, how to approach those topics and, and how to kind of continue to be successful. We have some students that come into the building knowing a handful of students um, and we have some students that come into the building knowing one or two students. So that also can be a struggle for some students and in terms with the remote learning this year. Freshman year is important. You start to meet a brand new variety of friends and with the remote learning, I know that is also creating some of those barriers to, to kind of branching out into being able to have some more open communication with those students. I know the lunchroom has some um, set seating and, and some of those things that we usually encourage the freshmen to branch out to meet new people to go to different places. So I want them to know if and I want you parents to know as well if, if you find that there's any concerns with your child or you feel like maybe they're still kind of a little bit reserved or feeling a little uncomfortable that there's certainly ways that we can still introduce them to, to new students and to get them involved with activities and um, and, and all the other great things that their freshman year provides for them. So any sort of academic, any sort of any sort of social concerns that you see that your student is facing, please let me know. My main goal is to overcome those barriers, make this transition from the middle school to the high school setting as smooth as possible to lay that foundation so that they have a really great solid framework so that they can just continue to build on that for their 10th, 11th and 12th grade year. So in doing so, helping with that transition, we do group guidance. 
I will go into the classroom and I will speak to your son or daughter in a classroom setting. We'll go over a lot of the information that we actually will be covering tonight. In um, addition, we'll go over some organizational tips and tools, um, just getting them used to the high school setting. I'll address any questions that they have at that time so that we can all um, be on the same page. We'll go over just um, important information, things that they need to know in moving forward, getting them introduced to some of the major networks that we use, the College Board, the Naviance, which you also will um, get a little bit of information about later into this presentation. But we'll do that in the group guidance. And then of course I do one-to-one -one guidance. So I will meet with students individually. I can do this remotely. I can do this face-to-face, -face, but I will meet with students individually. I will do random check-ins with students just to shoot an email, say, how's it going? Um, I may email a student to come up to see me and see if they will just come up to my office and have a quick chat with me, make sure things are going well. Again, this year is so important. To just not, not only is every freshman year important, but this year in particular with the unconventional start that we're having, just to make sure that your student is feeling super comfortable here. Um, so that's going to be my number one goal. Um, making sure that transition as smooth as possible, make sure we're overcoming any obstacles or barriers that are preventing that, that smooth transition. In terms of guidance, we have a couple different changes with COVID, um, not, not too crazy, but um, some different things with our guidance department is we do require that students make appointments to see us. So what that would mean is a student would email me if they would like to see somebody in guidance. They can email me and then we'll set up a time that meets that works best with their schedule and my schedule. And then they'll come and see me. We ask that they keep their um, their scheduled time. If something comes up, we can obviously reschedule. If a student does need to see me, we ask that they email first. So if potentially your student um, has an issue going on, there might be an emergency or a crisis situation, they email me and I do not get back to them right away. Potentially I'm with a student or maybe I'm out of my office in a meeting. That student can always go down to the office and then the office will find me. So we will always make sure that we're available to your student no matter what. Um, but your student may say that they've spoken to upperclassmen or even siblings who may have heard guidance having this open door policy where students congregate in our common areas. We're hoping to get back to that, but right now we are asking students um, just that we have one student in our office at a time and that they do schedule those meetings to come see us. That all will be communicated to your child too, but um, of course if something's going on or they're passing by at the change of class and they want to stop in, they notice that no one's there, my office is empty, of course they can come in and just you know poke in with a question or, or whatever it may be. In addition to the group guidance and the one-to-one -one guidance, we will have parent meetings and conferences. Again, parent meetings, the guidance always welcomes parent meetings. We can do those virtually. We can do those face-to-face. -face. If we do have a face-to-face -face, uh, meeting, we just ask that there be two adults in our office at a time. But the conferences, we will um, iron that out as, as time goes, depending on what that looks like when the conference time is is up, you will get all that communicated out to you um, when the time comes. Our student assistance program. So one thing that guidance is always a part of is our SAP team or our student assistance program. This is ba basically a program that is out there just to help assist your students. It could be that they are experiencing any difficulties at home or at school with drugs or alcohol. It can be a variety of reasons why a student is referred, but the main thing is that we are offering that student additional support. So those referrals can come from school staff, they can come from parents, they can come with friends, or it could be a self-referral. We do, once that referral is made, basically what would happen is I would, I would communicate to you that a referral has been made and here are the reasons why it might be that they are struggling academically or they notice that they're very tired in, in class or it could be something small, um, it could be something more serious, but I will communicate that to you. You and I will have a conversation of what that SAP um, progress looks like and then we'll determine if you think that's going to be beneficial for your son or daughter. 
It, yeah, one of the big points with the SAP um, SAP program is, you know, so I think sometimes parents look at something like, you know, when, the, when a SAP referral comes across, there's some sort of like stigmatization of being like, oh, well, you know, something's wrong with my son or daughter. You know, the reality is, 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 is the SAP program is, is all about trying to give students that additional support so that they can be successful. Everything's completely confidential. Everybody that's on, on our SAP teams are, are trained. They go through a you know, rigorous training process. Um, and all of that is designed, you know, again, anytime anybody's going to be re reaching out is, is it solely for the benefit of, of, you know, your sons and daughters. So we don't want anybody to think like, oh, well, you know, I'm a little nervous about my son, son, daughter. Um, in, the, in those situations, again, it's, it's a hundred percent designed to be help, uh, help and aid and assistance to, you know, your sons and daughters, you know, growth development, um, and, you know, to tackle some of those problems that, um, that, that any one of us may have had when we were, uh, when we were teenagers. Um, you know, in that in that growth and development process. Absolutely. That's a huge point um, that Mr. Patooch made too. If a student is coming to see myself um, or if a, a drug and alcohol liaison, mental health liaison is, is necessary, I email that student to say, can you come to guidance? So absolutely no one would ever know who they're seeing or why they're being seen. So it is, again, just 100% um, a confidential voluntary program, but it is there just as added support for your student. Um, that process is very simple. If it is beneficial to you, you simply would um, give us permission to see your son or daughter. We would gather the information, we'd identify whatever problems are creating those barriers, and then we'd offer solutions to those um, problems. So again, that goal for SAP is just to help your student be successful in the school setting. Additional, um, an additional program that we have guidance a part of is our academic improvement plan. So our academic improvement plan is basically such that guidance monitors student grades. I will look at student grades throughout the year and I'll, if, if I see a student is academically struggling, potentially they have a couple Fs, they have two Fs, maybe one F and two Ds or three Ds or a combination of any of those, we would put the student on an academic improvement plan. So this is, again, not to be a negative stigma to that student, but more as a support tool for that student. The very first line of defense is that student and myself sit down and we discuss why they're struggling. What does that student feel is the problem? Maybe it's that they don't have very good study skills in place yet, or their, their organizational tools are all over the place. So whatever they think might be kind of creating that barrier and then he or she and I sit down and we look at two to three, three to four strategies as, that they think would be helpful. Those strategies are then shared with the teachers and all of us work together to help support your student. So that is um, that would be an academic improvement plan. And in, in addition to the academic improvement plan, guidance does monitor grades. And we will check if a student does look like they're struggling, maybe a particular day looks like they're not doing quite well, we will re be reaching out to students just to check in and make sure that everything's going okay, make sure the remote um, learning is, is going smoothly, whatever case might be, but we will continue to monitor those grades and checking in with that student throughout the entire year. Yeah, and on those academic improvement uh, uh, plans, you know, that that's also, you know, a, a bridge between guidance and administration. So if you're, you know, if it's your son, uh, Mr. Uh, Mr. Rick Herbstritt, I would also potentially be reaching out uh, assistant vice president on the prep campus uh, or your daughter, uh, Ms. Veronica Conroe. Uh, who's the assistant vice president of uh, academics and student affairs on the billing campus. So they kind of, you know, head those up in tandem with, uh, with our guidance counselors. But the, again, that's all designed to be, you know, continuous monitoring to ensure our students are going to be as successful as possible and to avoid like those traps. Again, I think one of the nice things about those academic improvement plans is, you know, that we're that we're being proactive so that we catch students at the at those, um, you know, midterms or mid quarter um, and at the quarters to make sure that, um, that, you know, next thing you know, it's not like a student's failing for the semester and now is in a, in a giant, um, you know, statistical hole to be able to, uh, to, to come back and be able to pass a class. Right. Um, and and that, that's something that we obviously want to prevent because sometimes it's a lot of stuff that's just outside of student's control, um, as, uh, as Ashley had indicated, you know, things with uh, uh, organizational strategies, right? Uh, teenagers are disorganized. No, especially 14, 15, 16 year olds, right? That, that definitely happens. So that's, that's we never want a student to feel like they're too much of in a hole and then they can't get out. That's yeah. never going to be the case. We're always going to make sure that we kind of catch that early on so that we can 
work with that student to help them, you know, feel more confident and um, know that they can get to a better point academically speaking. One thing that I will speak with students about um, is the fact that although this is all new for their ninth grade year and that they're making that transition, that grades matter now. Um, I will speak with students in terms of making sure that they're turning in work, meeting deadlines, using their planner, staying organized, all of those tools that will keep them on track. Um, one of the main reasons that I uh, reiterate to students that grades matter right now is in terms of scheduling. So when we go to schedule for next year, um, although we just started this year <laughs> and we're talking about next year already, but when we go to schedule for the 21-22 school year, it doesn't stop, Ashley. It doesn't yeah. stop, right? <laughs> um, we will determine their placement for their 10th grade based on their semester one grade. So what we'll do is we'll look at quarter one and quarter two, and then that semester grade will determine whether or not that student remains in the academic level that they are in, if they advance or if they go down. So if a student is currently in an honors course, they would need an 88% to maintain that honors level for the following year. If they would want to move up an academic level, they're in an academic class, they want to move to an honors class, they would need to earn a 93% in that um, specific subject. So I will explain that to students time and time and time again. I want to burn that into their head because that is going to be the case for freshman year, for sophomore, junior year. Um, that semester one grade will always be the determining factor on how they how we schedule them right. for their, their yeah, and that year. and that's the automatic slotting that we do because scheduling um, you know that process begins in February right. um, of the academic year. But um, if a student does dramatically improve their grade, um, we have moved them up a level or maintain them the level that they were previously, even if the um, the initial indicator was that they should stay the same or maybe even move down. So we always revisit that, yeah. um, you know, in the scheduling process, but that's how it automatically kicks in just so that we have a good idea of where um, what our numbers are for classes so that we can we can start dividing up for uh, uh, teacher teaching loads and, and what the schedule the master schedule is going to ultimately and the, the flip side of that too, I always make sure to, to explain to students that even though we're looking at first and second quarter grade, your third and fourth quarter grade always matter as well. Just like Mr. Patuch said, we look at the third and fourth quarter grade, potentially at the, for the end of the semester, you were borderline, maybe you were at a 90%, you were very close, but you weren't quite there, so we'll revisit at the end of the year. If we notice that at, at the semester you move into that academic or um, honors, you move up, and by third and fourth quarter we see the grades starting to slide the other way so it, it is something that we will always be looking through quarter one through quarter four but we just use that that first semester just to start um, looking for class size for the following year like mr patooch said a couple other things that we do have um, the ninth graders get into is our college entrance practice testing so we want students to have an idea of that PSAT, ACT testing, just so that they feel comfortable with that. Um, the main goal is to establish a starting point so that we can start to, to get those students um, ready for college and career readiness. Two um, very extremely useful tools that I will have all students create and account for is College Board and Khan Academy. So, um, I will have students set up accounts in group count or in group guidance for College Board and Khan Academy, but both are extremely useful for not only standardized testing, but outside of standardized testing. Khan Academy has a huge um, instructional tool. It, it covers different variety of subjects. It has quizzes. So does College Board. They're so useful outside of standardized testing. So students will get that account set up freshman year and they will utilize that throughout all four years here at Prep Van Villa. Some of the testing that we will have, not some, the two testing that we have freshmen complete is the PSAT 8-9 and the Aspire test. So the PSAT 8-9 is um, going to be offered in the fall and then the Aspire will be in the spring. Those dates are still to be determined. Uh, we're, we're looking at a date that will work for both campuses. When that is put into our schedule, that will be communicated to all of you. But um, both of those tests will be free to students. 
they'll be offered on each individual campus. So the freshmen on Villa's campus and Prep's campus will take that PSAT 8-9 on the same day, as well as Aspire on the same day. Yeah, as of right now, we're exploring a couple different testing options. Um, most years, so we uh, uh, we uh, typically, for those of you that have older uh, sons or daughters that have gone through Prep or Villa, um, we have our testing day, which this year is October 14th. That's actually the, nas the national testing date for the, uh, the the PSAT, which is also the, uh, the National Merit uh, Scholarship Qualifying Test. Um, so that day has always been testing day on our schedules and, and seniors would get the day off and um, freshmen, sophomores, juniors would come in for the day. Um, this year, because of the, uh, the spacing restrictions that are in place, we're only gonna have the sophomores and the juniors in that day to do the pre-ACT for the 10th graders the, and the uh, the pre-SAT for, the, or I'm sorry, the pre-ACT for the sophomores and the pre-SAT for the juniors. Um, but in, in this process, and so the freshmen aren't going to be coming in that day either, um, along with the seniors, but one of the things that the College Board has done is uh, made the, uh, the PSAT 8-9 available um, digitally, right, so that students are going to be able to take those, uh, those tests, that test on their iPad. And um, we hope to have that scheduled in October um, at this stage of the game, but uh, the building administration team um, will be meeting later this week to, to make that determination. But we definitely want to make sure that we have those baselines um, established for your sons and daughters um, heading into the next four years so that we can start looking at measuring some growth um, and also areas where, where potentially, you know, um, our students need to do some additional work um, in preparation for, um, for the SAT and the ACT um, for college entrance um, uh, application purposes. Yep, and that's the nice thing about taking it freshman year. So we, we get that baseline. We can see if students are on track for college. Um, we can identify where those improvements need to be made, and then those students can start working on those um, certain subjects or certain areas into ninth grade, tenth grade. So they're well ready for that PS or excuse me for that SAT or ACT when it comes time to yep. take those. Yeah, I get it. I mean, you know, people talk about like the, the validity of the sort of standardized testing and all that other stuff. You know, the reality is, is that is a big metric that colleges and universities still look at. Um, you know, maybe some of you have heard that colleges and universities have, have you know, been a little bit lenient on that standard um, because of uh, COVID-19. Um, I don't see standardized testing going away anytime in the near future um, for college application. It's just that's not going to happen, right? Because uh, colleges and universities ultimately want to see like those national, you know, state and national measures. Um, so that's something we definitely want to make sure that our students are prepared for and are going to be able to, to be, um, you know, have the skills to be able to be successful on those. Yep. So as it comes closer to those dates, I will be going into the classroom. I will be um, discussing both of those exams with the students a little bit more in detail, what to expect, facts about each section, and we'll look at some practice questions and such. So um, they will get more information once we kind of get that date set in stone. So my school app, for the first time users to my school app, um, I have included a step-by-step -step login if you have not had a chance to log into my school app, I highly recommend doing so. Um, I know that over the summer we have had, you know, all of our communications go through my school app and, and some of the parent documents that need to be signed. So hopefully everyone has been able to get on to it. If you have not had a chance, I did list here how to get in. You simply go to that login. Um, you'll click on the um, forgot login or first time user and then you'll input your email address and then I always say to click the username and the password. It just seems to be both easier to send at one time so then you have that information. Once you are able to get onto my school app, um, you are able to view schedules to look at grades. You can monitor student progress. The report cards will be made available. Progress reports will be made available on my school app. You can look at each individual class so you can see um, the assignments your student is turning in, what grades they've got for those students or for that assignment. Um, hopefully they won't have any missing assignments, but if a missing assignment is in there, they'll be able to view that as well. You can communicate with teachers through My School app. Um, I know most are doing through Teams with our remote learning right now, but the My School app is also an additional um, communication yeah. tool for. Yeah, that, that's a that's a really big point, um, Ashley. Uh, you know, when you look at like how My School app works, and uh, you know that serves as the school's um, you know student information. Um, uh, management system, right? So the idea is, is 
you know, this is where all of our contact information from address, emails, phone numbers, and things like that. Um, also, you know, if you've received any of the emails through um, School Messenger, right, um, a lot of times those, those come from me or, or Mr. Haggerty, um, our president, that um, those, uh, that pulls immediately from this system. Right. So again, you know, in order to uh, ensure that you're getting those emails, um, you know, we, we obviously you, know, you want to be engaged in that. Uh, and, and that's one of those biggest things. When we talk about that partnership between the school and our families. Um, you know, again, having that ability, those means of communication is really, really important stuff uh, to say the least. And if you have tried to log on and have um, been unsuccessful, please let myself know, Mr. Patricia, we'll get you in contact with the IT department. Um, I know in past we had one or two parents who did not have a email on file and so they were unable to get into my school app. So we can work through whatever it is, but we want to make sure that you're able to get onto that my school app. You're able to um, view all of the things that are listed in there for your student. In addition to the academic resource of my school app, of course, we have our faculty. So our faculty are the first line of, of communication for all students. If a student comes to see me and says that they are struggling, one of the first things I'm going to ask them is if they have spoken to their teacher. I want to make sure that students are feeling comfortable, especially freshman year, to start that line of communication. Students um, need to know that the teachers want to hear from them. I know some students are nervous or they're afraid. They don't want to say to their teacher, I don't understand or I'm not getting it or what you're saying doesn't make sense to me. But I promise you that teachers want to know that information. They want to know if your child is struggling and why they feel like they're struggling. So. Um, our faculty, you can reach out to any teacher, any staff, administration, um, all of our guidance department, anyone is always available to you. My main um, drilling point will always just be to reach out. Doesn't matter who it is that you're reaching out to, but make sure that you're reaching out. In addition to faculty, we have our Act 89 teachers. So these are certified teachers that come to Villa during the school day and prep during the school day. This is a program that is free of charge for students and it's not necessarily a tutoring program, but it does support the regular math and language um, curriculum that is in place. So they do cover the two subjects, the math and the language arts. And again, it helps more or less with the background skills that are needed to be successful in those classes. The process for getting involved with the Act 89 teachers is very simple. We do require parent permission. However, I believe that they're even working on a permission slip that is um, able to be digital. So if a student feels that they're struggling in math or language arts specifically, this is an, uh, an awesome opportunity for students just to get that added support. Those IU coaches meet with um, the student one on one or in a, a small group setting. We always try to make sure that that happens outside of a core class. Not that their elective classes are, are, are not important as well, but if a student has a study hall and a, a schedule, that's likely the time that they'll be meeting with that IU coach. And then once that um, process is set up, the student and the IU teacher work um, independently one on one. They'll email back and forth to set up a schedule that works great with their schedules um, and then how frequently they meet and, and such. So. This is a really wonderful problem or wonderful um, opportunity that is available to students to get that added support in both that language arts and that math content area. The NHS peer tutoring is another opportunity that we have available to students, just to, another added support for students outside of a faculty member, a teacher. Um, the peer support sometimes is, is really what students need. So our peer tutors are a combination of 9th through 12th grade students who have performed well in specific courses. Um, they have been trained in the policies and the procedures for peer tutoring. And this program is specifically just designed to help students who are struggling academically. Um, it could be because of the academic caseload or potentially a student was injured or out for an illness and they just kind of need that added support. Um, they've gone to teachers, they've come to guidance and they just want to talk to a peer, somebody who's more, you know, who has had that class, who has had that teacher who can kind of give them the insides of um, how to navigate that class and, and how to best succeed um, academically. 
that peer tutoring last year was um, available to all students after school, so I'm not quite sure how that will look this year, but I know that once that program is up and running, the communication will all be emailed to students, and then I will follow up with all the ninth graders um, with that information too, just so that they are aware that it is available and that they can start to use that. Naviant. Um, the Naviance is a, a college and career readiness forum that helps connect academic achievement to post-secondary goals. So all freshmen will be introduced through Naviance um, during our group guidance. The freshmen will be given individual registration codes and I will walk each freshman through creating an account on Naviance. Once the freshmen are on Naviance, we will use a different, a few different things on Naviance. Um, the very first one that we use that I think is one of the most important is a variety of assessments, but the, the specific one is the learning style inventory. So this is just an assessment that will help identify different um, preferred learning and working styles. So a student will be able to answer a series of questions and then based on those questions, they'll give you information on how to study best. So maybe you study best with a partner or with music playing. So the series of questions that the student answers will just help them kind of look at their specific study habits in a little bit of a different light. We'll also have um, surveys on there. We'll do the freshman interview on Naviance. That just helps me to learn your student a little bit more. And then obviously when they move into their sophomore year, that counselor will be new to your student again so they can look at their freshman interview and just kind of get a snapshot of your student and um, some of their likes, their interests, their strengths, their weaknesses. And then in addition to that, we will work on a resume. So freshmen will be able to start their resume um, freshman year, and then they will continue to work on that resume throughout their three years there. So by the time they're walking out as a senior, they'll have a working resume. Yeah, and those those resumes, I can't I can't say stress this enough to parents, and this is something I know that we, we harp on with the freshmen regularly, not just Ashley, um, going in group guidance, which is typically in theology classes. Um, I know that our freshman seminar teachers also um, you know, talk about that. I know that's something that I touch on when I go in to meet with our, our freshmen in, in the freshman seminar is building that resume now, right? Because, um, you know, sophomore, junior year rolls around and then next thing you know, um, your son or daughter wants to go to X, Y, or Z school and it then becomes kind of tough of like, well, what are all the things that I've done over the last three, four years mm -hmm. that would be a unique experience that would be something that a college or university is going to look at me as being like, hey, you know, like, top, you know, Ivy League schools or top 50 research institutions, things like that. You're going to be like, hey, well, so what's going to be that things that differentiates me from somebody else? Because they're looking at, you know, a lot of students with really strong standardized testing scores, really strong GPAs and QPAs. And it's it's okay. So what's that difference maker? Yep. What and makes that, you stand out? Yeah. What makes you stand out? And that's a really really big thing. And documenting what um, what our students are doing early, right, is is super super important in that process. Because um, and then also sometimes it's kind of funny because that stuff sometimes will lead to um, scholarship dollars, right? That are that are kind of unintended. Like people, oh well, I didn't even realize because I had done X Y or Z that don't. Next thing you know, I qualify for a scholarship or a grant through a particular college or university. And again, it's all about that 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 gathering of information is really, really important stuff. Mm -hmm. So, you know, just to just to make sure that everyone, you know, that parents have an idea of that. And, uh, you know, we stress that with the freshmen, but sometimes the freshmen don't listen. Mm -hmm. No, no yep. right? So. And we'll go over that through group guidance. We'll start kind of, uh, that's something that I'll start talking about right now, right at the beginning of the year. So like Mr. Patooch said, throughout the year, they can kind of just start making little mental notes and adding those things in when we start working on that closer to the end of the year. Um, but Naviance is a program that your student will use now freshman year all the way through graduation. So later down the road, um, they will request transcripts through Naviance, um, letters of recommendations will go through Naviance, college visits um, will go through Naviance. So Naviance will be something that your student will use um, freshman year, but a, a much, much more into their sophomore, junior and senior year. As a parent, you also have access to Naviance. So you'll be able to log on and create your own Naviance account. Um, so I'm going to walk you through how to go um, create a Naviance account. So 
once you log into the Naviance um, website there, you'll see on the bottom right hand corner, it will say for students and parents. You'll click on that and then it'll um, take you to the screen where you it asks for the school that your child goes to. Um, just as a reminder, use your zip code. Um, unfortunately for Villa, if you write in Villa Maria Academy, there is a number of villas that show up and it's much easier if you put in the 16505 for Villa. It'll um, a little hyperlink underneath will show up as Villa Marie Academy. You'll click on that and then you'll see um, actually if you go to the next slide there, you'll see there the welcome Villa Marie Academy. You'll see the seal up there so you'll know you're right on the on the right one um, for Cathedral Prep. If you add, if you write Cathedral Prep, it'll take you straight to the, the prep hyperlink. Um, in addition, you can put that zip code for prep 16501 as well. Um, once you you click on your hyperlink, it'll take you to the page that says that you're new and you need to register. You'll click on that and then you have to enter your registration code. So where do you find your registration code? Good question. You will find your parent registration code for Naviance on my school app. So when you log into my school app, um, as soon as you log in, you'll see the, your child's general information page. You'll go click on the contact tab right on the right hand side. And then once you click on the contact tab, you'll scroll all the way down to the very bottom of the page. And on the very bottom of the page, you'll see um, it will say relationships. And then there will be two hyper or a hyperlink for your name. You'll click on your name. So once you click on your name now, if you do have another parent um, or guardian listed, each individual parent or guardian will have their own unique registration code. So if you would like to create both, you can do that at the same time, but um, you will have to do them individually. So you'll click on your name and then it'll take you to a, another contact page. And then you'll see underneath last name um, under general information, it'll say first name, last name, and then it'll say Naviance parent registration code and your code will be listed there. So unfortunately, this is just a test student, so we don't have all of that information on here, but the little arrows should guide you to where you will find that on your actual My School app. Um, Naviance, you will have a parent Naviance account and a student Naviance account, so you do not need to get your student registered on Naviance. I will do that in group guidance. This is the steps to get your parent um, Naviance account activated. Uh, in addition to that, I will include um, some PDF handouts and all of that will be on a handout too. So if it's easier to have that printed out and just follow the directions while you're doing them, you those um, those information will be listed yeah. on those handouts as well. Yep. And all those resources will be posted on the school's uh, on the school's website under the guidance tab. Um, I'll actually email um, a, a link out to everybody either tomorrow or Friday once uh, uh, once we get that posted. And one side note for the Naviance, if you do have an older um, a sibling or an older child that has gone through prep or Vela and you created a Naviance code with or a Naviance account with them and you're having trouble logging into this one, please just email me. Um, it is a simple fix. We can do it. So if you are having troubles with that Naviance login, please just feel free to email me and you and I can communicate and get you set up on that. So for NCAA, the, the main thing that I would like to just let you know about now freshman year is just to start planning now. Um, your son or daughter, if they're interested in playing for um, playing sports for a division one school, we want them just to start planning now. Get those the best possible grades that they can right now. Um, they will not have to register until their junior year, but they can start looking, making sure that they're con um, consulting the website and they're staying on track. They're meeting those requirements. I have listed a um, a site where you can kind of track those, making sure that they're having all the core classes that are necessary. I have included the CEB codes, which you will need when you log in um, for prep and for Villa. Um, but the main thing that I try and encourage students to know is that um, freshman year will count towards college athletic eligibility. 
um, not only for NCAA, but in terms of applying for a college, your freshman year is a third of what college admissions are looking at. So it is important, even though I know it is a transitional period, it is important to make sure that you're doing the very best that you can. So if you find that you are struggling, please make sure if your student or your son come to you and say, I'm just not, I'm just not grasping it. I just feel like I'm just not quite where I need to be. Make sure that they're reaching out to me. Make sure that you're reaching out to me, even if you don't, you know, say, hey, could you on the slide check in with my son or daughter? Although I, they could be watching this now, so they already know that that might happen. But nonetheless, please let us know. We want to make sure that we're reaching out. Uh, we don't want your child to wait until 10th, 11th grade, come up to guidance and say, what can I do to get my GPA up? Right. Um, we want that to, to be a conversation that's being had right now in ninth grade. Right. Yeah. And that's and that's a really, really good point. Uh, and again, I think a lot of times, you know, even, you know, students for a variety of sports, um, you know, will think like, oh, well, everything's going to magically be taken care of because, you know, you know, scouts are looking at me and, and coaches are looking at me and things like that. And the reality is, is, is that academic performance is really, really important. Now, our curriculum meets, you know, all NCAA guidelines and standards and things like that. So as long as students are completing the courses that they need, need to um, at school, they're, they're typically going to be in good shape. But QPA and GPA do matter, mm -hmm. right, um, through that process. And, and again, the NCAA does look at those things. I know that a lot of our coaches um, are well versed in that, um, especially our coaches that have been around for a while. Um, but at the same time, if, if that's something that's on, you know, your radar, your son's or daughter's radar, um, you know, be, let's be proactive on that to make sure that everybody's um, hitting hitting the um, uh, the milestones and, and the, the marks that they need to um, moving forward. Not just for NCA, I mean, just in general, it would be very helpful, right, um, to say the least. I'd just like to touch on some special academic opportunities that your student will be um, able to participate down the road. Um, one being our Gannon program. So Gannon is open to academically talented juniors and seniors, and the classes that um, those students take their junior or senior year are at a reduced um, tuition rate at Gannon. So um, a little bit about the program. It is limited, it is competitive. Um, basically, we're given a number of um, slots available for each year, and those, those numbers can change each year, um, but our first year students um, must take two courses and then our second year students can take two or three, but guidance will be into all classes um, and parent meetings discussing the Gannon program a little more in detail into their sophomore, junior and senior year. Uh, we do have an articulation agreement with Gannon, so any student that's taking all honors or AP classes during their four years at Prepper Villa can receive college credit when they matriculate to Gannon. And then another opportunity that is available to freshmen is our junior achievement program. So I have included a website to that that you uh, may look at your leisure, but our junior uh, achievement program, it, it's a really neat program. It educates students about um, entrepreneurship, work readiness, financial literacy. They're all hands-on programs. Um, again, this is gonna be something that rolls out. Well, we'll see how it, how it kind of they, they actually have plans in place um, for uh, for online opportunities for students this year. Um, and if your son or daughter is interested on the on the prep campus, Mr. Tony Parsons um, actually you know heads that up um, here on the Villa campus. Um, it's uh, Mrs. Ruth Lalajiri um, heads that up, and it's a phenomenal opportunity. Actually, it's kind of funny. I, I took a, a letter in today to the business office, and um, you know you know students receiving scholarship mm -hmm. uh, for tuition ranging between fifteen hundred dollars and forty five hundred dollars. Um, through the uh, the junior achievement program, it's a it's a phenomenal opportunity for our uh, for our students to say the least. Yep. So we want to make sure that those are on your radar, so that your your student is looking out for those. Um, and that's about all that I have right now for anyone. Um, if anyone has a question that is specific to their child, and you don't want it on the open forum. Please do not hesitate to email me if this is something that you are not able to um, log in live and you're viewing this later on. Do not hesitate to email me or call me with any sort of questions that you have and I'd be happy to um, get back to you with any of those answers. Yeah, so I guess at this stage of the game, if there's any questions if, if for that, that you feel like may be good for the group or anything that you think needs clarified for the good of the group, go ahead and put those uh, questions in the uh, um, in the live Q and A, um, you know, we'll we'll, we'll uh, hang on for a little bit here. Uh, maybe uh, maybe put some some banter together. Um, 
maybe. <laughs> maybe. No, no, I should not, not should not. Okay, right, it happens, it happens. Um, but all right, well, I, I'm not seeing any questions coming across here. Um, so thank you all um, for uh, for your time and attention, either either this evening watching live or else anybody that's uh, that's watching the, uh, the, the the tape version of this. Um, you know, the biggest thing that I want to make sure I reiterate to all of you, um, you know, the, the school's uh, uh, school, school's new you know focus for the year, our core values uh, put forward by our president, Mr. Chris Haggerty, um, understanding that faith comes first. You know, everything that we do, you know, we want to make sure that we're mission driven and everything we do as a school, whether that be faculty, staff, administration, but also making sure that we uh, we instill those core values in your sons and daughters, making sure that they they uh, are, are instilled with faith, integrity, respect, service, um, and trust. Um, and so um, uh, we'll definitely make sure we do that. Oh, hey, we have a question. How about that? Oh, we got a question. All right, question uh, through. What groups uh, or clubs are open to freshmen? Um, we're actually going to be having um, uh, the, the clubs and activities fair is going to be coming up. Uh, I know at Villa it's happening a little bit sooner than it's happening at Prep um, this year. Um, and because of everything that's going on with COVID, typically we do that the second or third week of school. Um, however, I believe the uh, uh, Villa event will be held um, towards the end of September, and then Preps event um, is is loosely being planned right now for the uh, the beginning of October. All clubs and activities um, are available to um, to our students. Um, you know, you can look at those clubs and activities on the school's website. Um, a few exclusive clubs and activities, I guess you'd say things like National Honor Society, um, those are only open to, um, you know, sophomores have the ability to apply for National Honor Society for going into their uh, going into their junior year. Um, and that's that's one of the few clubs activities that I think are, are barred um, for, for actually for but but I will say this um, getting involved in clubs and activities early on is definitely really, really helpful. Um, if your son or daughter came to Prepper Villa for for sports and maybe they find that maybe sports aren't aren't exactly um, panning out the way that they want, maybe they didn't grow or they're not as fast as maybe they thought they were when they were in middle school, um, getting involved in those those clubs and activities is super super helpful um, for for feeling integrated into the school environment. And uh, it's kind of odd that they, you know those those can open up a lot of doors in the process as well. Um, you know, I used to be the coordinator for the uh, the speech and debate program. Um, you know, I, I don't, I can't remember a single debater that I that I had um, that didn't get significant college scholarship. Uh, they were usually really good students on top of it. So, and that's a great way too for freshmen to meet some new people, yeah. some people that are outside of their classes um, that they may not interact yeah. with on a daily basis otherwise. Yeah, outside of their classes, also, you know, maybe maybe coming from a different school. Mm -hmm. and stuff like that. Absolutely, that helps. Any other? All right. Well, um, for Villa parents, um, we do have our open house scheduled, uh, or I'm sorry, meet the teacher night. I'm sorry, scheduled for this evening, and so um, hopefully you've received those links from your um, uh, from your daughter's teachers. Um, for prep uh, freshman parents, those links may have already started to be emailed out, but the uh, uh, meet the meet the teacher night uh, for prep all being done uh, digitally. Um, that's going to be held next Wednesday from 7 to roughly 9 p.m. And I'll send a reminder email out to everybody um, the way that I have been doing um, over the last couple of weeks. So um, thank you all for a uh, great evening. And, um, you know, as always, if you have any questions or any concerns, feel free to reach out to Mrs. Mook um, or anybody in the guidance office, um, myself, um, uh, Ms. Conroe on the Villa campus, Mr. Herbstreit on the uh, uh, on the prep campus. Um, and you know any of your sons or daughters teachers um, the biggest thing I want to make sure that you all understand is, is we're here for your sons and daughters we want to make sure that they're going to be as successful as possible in their um, high school experiences to make sure that they go on to do great things to go on and do God's will in everything that they do so um, with that God bless folks and have a good evening thank you